Administrator Fugate, welcome to Missouri. Just want to talk a few minutes about earthquakes. I know California, Alaska has a lot more earthquakes. Why is it important for Missouri and Midwest to prepare for earthquakes? Your history. Some of the largest earthquakes that have occurred in the United States have actually occurred here in the New Madrid Fault Zone. You know, a lot of people think, well, it's California, Alaska. Yeah, they're more frequent, but big earthquakes occur here. And the other problem is there's a lot different soil structures here, which prom promotes much different types of damage. So where people may say, hey, I don't live out in California. I live here. I live on a farm. I live away from downtown. You know, I don't have mountains around me. You know, why is this a risk? Well, imagine your field erupting in a sand bowl covering the roads and disrupting infrastructure, or bridges that were actually designed to be earthquake proof, but the approaches get liquefied and are destroyed. And, and these impacts aren't going to be just locally where the major part of the quake occurs. This is a part of the country where earthquakes will actually be felt much further away and impacts will be much further away from the epicenter. So it's a different type of threat, but it's a significant threat based upon not only the earthquake fault, but the type of soils we have here in the central U.S. and those types of impacts. In May, Missouri, along with other states, are going to participate in the National Level Exercise 2011, which focuses along the New Madrid seismic zone. Why is it important to other disasters' response to prepare for this earthquake? Well, we look at, when we do a national level exercise, we look at those which would have national and strategic impacts to the United States, not only just to the areas impacted, but think about all of the major transportation hubs that pass through the central U.S. and what it would do to our economy if those were disrupted. So this becomes a national level exercise that will include participation at the highest levels of the federal government, which is why it's important that it goes down to the local community and to citizens being engaged in this exercise. What, the, what should the public in general do to be prepared for an earthquake? Get a plan. Think about what you would do if you lost power, water, sewage, you couldn't drive to the store, the stores weren't open, and what you need to take care of yourself and your family for the first couple of days when something happens. The most important thing is people need to understand disasters don't always give us a warning. An earthquake does not have a forecast. What else is the most important people should people that should know about preparing for an earthquake? One of the things that's going to happen is when the earthquake occurs, a lot of disruptions will take place. We think it's really important that people think about how they're going to communicate and let people know if they're okay or if they need help. Traditionally, you know, we know we're going to dial 911 if it's working. But the other thing we know that people that have built in their plans, how they're going to let other people know they're okay becomes an important part of a community's response. And so think about what your family communication plan is. We know, and we've seen this in Haiti, in New Zealand, in Chile, and in other earthquakes in more recent history, that the cell systems and wireless systems actually survive. So it's important that you look at how you're going to communicate, make sure you have a way to keep those cell phones charged after the power goes out and understand that in a crisis, you may not be able to dial or get through locally, but you need to be able to have a plan to let people know you're okay. Mr. Fugate, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming, Missouri, and talking to us.